I dubbed these wrist warmers Queen Bee due to the way the beautiful stitch pattern reminds me of a honeycomb. It's a bit challenging to work in the posts, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be buzzing through it in no time. For a full list of supplies, see the description box below. For this tutorial, you are going to need about 100 to 150 yards of acrylic yarn. I'm using Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn in the color linen, and it is 100% acrylic yarn. This is also a 5.5 millimeter hook that I will be using. I'm just using the size recommended on the yarn sleeve. You are also going to need a tape measure. The wrist warmers are worked from the cuff to the wrist, and you begin by making a foundation double crochet. Begin that by chaining three, and then turn so that you're working in the back hump of the chain. Yarn over and place your hook in the first chain that you made. Yarn over, pull up one loop. Now we're going to create the chain while we go, so you're going to chain one. And now you are going to continue to your double crochet like you normally would. So yarn over and go through two, yarn over, go through two. So now we are going to work into the chain that we just created at the base of our last double crochet, right in this place here. So again, you are going to yarn over, put your hook in that chain, yarn over, pull up one loop, yarn over, chain one. Now create your double crochet, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. So as you can tell, our piece is working more vertically as we go along, instead of from side to side like you normally would. So I'm going to show you a few more times. Find the chain that you just created at the base of your last stitch. Yarn over, put your hook in that chain. Yarn over, draw up one loop. Yarn over, chain one. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. So you're just going to continue working your foundation double crochet until you have a total of 24 foundation double crochet. Your piece should measure approximately 8 inches, so if it doesn't, I would adjust your hook size accordingly. So once you have 24 foundation double crochet, I will meet you at the end. Of course, you could also make a chain and then double crochet into it if you're not comfortable with the foundation double crochet. So again, go ahead and make 24 foundation double crochet, and I will meet you at the end. So here I have 24 foundation double crochet, and I'm going to measure this and show you what it should measure. So it should measure about 8 inches across. Or 20 centimeters. So I'm going to show you that this part is going to actually go around the lower forearm. Now we are going to join our ends and make a ring. So I'm skipping over that first chain two. That does not count as a stitch. So I'm going to slip stitch into the top of my first foundation double crochet. And I'm going to use this tail here that I started with to sew the gap closed later on. It's not really important at this point. So you're going to chain two to begin round two. This does not count as a stitch. And we are going to start working around the posts of the stitches of last round. So the first stitch will be a back post double crochet around the very first stitch below. In the next stitch, we're going to do a front post double crochet. And then a back post double crochet. And a front post double crochet. So you're just going to continue alternating front post and back post double crochet. 
all the way around until you get to the last stitch. So here we are at the very last double crochet. It should be a front post double crochet since we began on a back post double crochet. And again, since that chain two does not count as a stitch, we're going to skip right over it and slip stitch into the top of the first stitch. So this is what your piece should look like. Again, we're going to sew that gap there shut later on, so don't even worry about it. But this is what your piece should look like. For round three, we are going to chain one and make one half double crochet in each stitch around. So you're just going to put one half double crochet in every stitch around and you should still have 24. So here I am at the end. I'm going to join into the first half double crochet that I made. And now we are going to begin our stitch pattern. So you are going to chain one and we are going to put one half double crochet in the first two stitches. Now we are going to be working into the front post double crochet from two rounds below. So we're going to be working backward and forward. We're going to skip a front post double crochet in between. So I'm going to show you we are going to work in this post here. So we're going to yarn over twice because we are going to front post treble two together. So insert your hook into the front post. And you're going to leave two loops on your hook. Because we're not going to complete it. We're going to front post treble two together. So we're skipping the next front post double crochet and we're yarning over twice. Put your hook around the next front post double crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. And now you should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, go through all three on your hook. So as you see, it created a sort of peak. Now, because we created a stitch right here, we're going to skip a stitch behind it. That way we don't increase. So now we are going to half double crochet in the next three stitches. Now we are going to work backwards and forwards again into the front post double crochet two rounds below. So we're going to front post treble two together, yarn over twice, going around that same post that our last one's in, yarn over, pull up one loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Now leave those last two loops on your hook, skip the next front post double crochet, and work into the next one. Yarn over twice, place your hook around that post, yarn over, pull up one loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through the last three loops on your hook. This is what it should be looking like. Because we created a stitch, we are going to skip a stitch and half double crochet in the next three stitches. We're just going to continue front post treble two together, backwards and forwards. So yarn over twice. Skip the next front post double crochet and front post treble. Now because we made a stitch, we need to skip a stitch half double in the next three stitches.
front post treble two together over the last front post double crochet then we're gonna skip one and go into the next front post double crochet skip a stitch half double in the next three stitches front post treble two together going backwards and forward skip one stitch and half double in the next three stitches this will be our last front post treble two together And now we should have two stitches left. We're going to skip one stitch and half double in the last stitch. There should be three half doubles between each front post treble two together. So now we're going to slip stitch into the very first half double crochet. This is what your piece should look like. We're going to chain one and half double crochet in the first stitch and in each stitch around. Again, you should only have 24 half double crochet. So be sure to count. You don't want to accidentally increase. So this is where we end our last round. We're going to slip stitch into the top of the first half double. Chain one, half double crochet in the first two stitches. Front post treble two together over the last point and the next point. It's a lot easier from here on out. So that's yarn over twice, going around the point of the last front post treble. Yarn over, pull up a loop, go through two, go through two, and then skip over to the next point, yarn over twice, going around the entire stitch there, Now since we made a stitch, we need to skip a stitch. So half double crochet in the next three stitches. Front post treble two together over the last point and the next point. Be very careful as to your hook placement. You just need to be consistent however you decide to insert your hook. Now we're going to skip a stitch and half double in the next three stitches. Front post treble two together over the last point and the next point. Skip a stitch, half double in the next three stitches. Front post treble two together over the last and the next two points. Skip a stitch, half double in the next three stitches. Front post treble two together over the last point and the next point. Skip a stitch. 
and half double in the next three stitches. This will be our last front post treble two together over the last point and the next point. Skip a stitch and half double crochet in the very last stitch of the round. Now you're going to slip stitch into the very first stitch of the round. You should still only have 24 stitches, and this is what your piece should look like. So we are just going to repeat the last two rounds over and over until you get the length that you want. So the next round, of course, will be half double crochet. And then the round after that will be the front post treble two together stitch pattern. So for this round, it's going to be a half double crochet in every stitch around. And again, there should only be 24 half double crochet. So here we are at the end. We're going to slip stitch into the very first half double crochet of the round. And now we start the stitch pattern round, which is a round six repeat. So that'll be a chain one, half double in the first two stitches. And then front post treble two together over the last and the next points. Skip a stitch and half double in the next three stitches. Front post treble two together over the last point and the next point. Skip a stitch and half double in the next three stitches. Front post treble two together over the last point in the next point. So you're just going to repeat the last two rounds over and over until you get the length that you want. So for me, I'm going to continue to repeat rounds five and six until I have a total of 14 rounds. And your last round should always be the front post treble two together round, regardless of how many you do. So here I've completed rounds one through 14, and I wanted to show you that it measures about six inches or about 15 centimeters. And now I'm going to show you about what it looks like on my arm. So this is about how long I want mine to be. If you want yours longer, you of course could just continue repeating those other two rounds. But now I'm going to show you how to make the thumb hole. So like I said, be sure that you end on a round where you front post treble two together, which is a round six repeat. So now I'm going to show you how to do round 15. Begin by making a chain. Half double crochet in the first stitch and in each stitch around. Only for this round, you are going to go until you reach the last stitch of the round and then you are going to leave that last stitch unworked. So here I have all the stitches except for this last one done, and I'm going to create a chain for the thumb hole. For the thumb hole, you are going to simply chain six. Now you will slip stitch into the first stitch, skipping over that last 
stitch of the round. So as you can see, I've created a thumb hole here. Now we're going to begin the next round. You will chain one. Half double crochet in the first two stitches. And now you will front post treble two together over the last and the next point. Skip the next stitch behind it and half double crochet in the next three stitches. This should look familiar. This is actually a continuation of the pattern. So now you will front post treble two together over the last point and the next point. Skip the next stitch behind it and half double in the next three stitches. You are just going to continue this stitch pattern all the way around until you reach the thumb hole. And once you reach the thumb hole, I'm going to show you what to do with it. So here I've reached the thumb hole. I've done my last three half doubles and I'm going to front post treble two together over the last two points of the round. I'm going to skip the next stitch, which will put me into the hole of the thumb hole. Now I'm going to simply make three half double crochet in the thumb hole. Slip stitch into the first half double crochet we made in the round. This is what your piece should look like. Chain two. It will not count as a stitch. Place a double crochet in the first two stitches. Now you will reach the point of the front post treble two together below. We are going to do a front post double crochet around that point. Now we will do a double crochet in the next three stitches. Make a front post double crochet around the point of the next stitch. You're just going to continue making three double crochet and then a front post double crochet around the point of the front post treble two together below. So just continue this all the way around until you get to the thumb hole and then I will show you what to do there. So here I've done my last three double. I'm going to front post double around that treble below. And then in these last three stitches of the round, I'm just going to make one double crochet in each of those stitches.
Now you will skip over the beginning chain two and slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet. This is what your piece should look like. Now you will chain two. Again, it will not count as a stitch. We are going to begin post work again. So for this very first stitch, we will front post double crochet. And in the next stitch, we will back post double crochet. Front post double crochet around the next front post double crochet. Back post double crochet. You should see the pattern forming here. I'm simply alternating front post and back post double crochet, and you just need to make sure that all of your front post double crochet coincide with the front post double crochets below. So just continue doing this all the way around until you reach the last stitch. So here we are at the end. I made my last back post double crochet. I'm skipping over the beginning chain two and slip stitching into the first stitch. We are going to do one more round of ribbing. So you will chain two. That will not count as a stitch. We will front post double crochet around the front post double below. And in the back post double crochet of the next stitch, we're just going to make a half double crochet. In the next front post double, we'll make another front post double crochet. Half double crochet in the next stitch. Front post double crochet around the next post. And half double crochet in the next stitch. You should see the pattern here. Just continue repeating that all the way around till you get to the end. Here I'm at the end. I'm skipping over the beginning chain two and slip stitching into my very first stitch. And we are pretty well finished. I'm just going to do one more round and it will be a round of single crochet. So chain one and single crochet in every stitch around. This just gives it a cleaner look. So just repeat that all the way around. Slip stitch to the very first stitch to join and we are going to fasten off. So now we're going to clean up our beginning foundation double crochet round. Take your beginning tail and thread it onto a yarn needle and simply shut the gap there that was created when we created our round. I just sew it shut. You don't have to do this, but I also add a round of single crochet to the bottom as I have on the top. It's really up to you. It looks just fine without it. So I'm going to add a round of single crochet to the bottom portion of the wrist warmer. You should still only have 24 when you're done, since we began with 24 foundation double crochet.
Once you're at the end, you just slip stitch into the first single crochet to join. I do an invisible join, but you don't have to. Fasten off, and I'm going to take a moment to weave in my ends. This is what your piece should look like after you have finished weaving in your tails. So here's the thumb hole, and as you can see, there's really no seam. So this can be a right or a left. So both wrist warmers are worked the exact same way since there is no seam. So just make another one just like this and you are done. If you are interested in making more than just the wrist warmers, I have a pattern for the complete set in my Etsy and Ravelry shops. You can find it in the description box below. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.